William Charles Wentworth is best remembered by most Australians as one of the three who crossed the Blue Mountains in 1813. Others might have further tweaked to the fact that he lived at Vaucluse House in Sydney's eastern suburbs. Yes, the man claimed both of these, but he was a much more complex, passionate and intelligent native-born Australian. Yep, he was born in New South Wales. I'm Michael Beeshall, here again, Australian historical fiction writer, and welcome to this, the first of two videos of a man who was most influential in early 19th century Sydney. Now his father, Darcy Wentworth, was related to a peer of the realm and a significant Whig. Now Whig is those who support Parliament over the King. He was a gambler and mixed in low company and was charged with robbery, but he was acquitted. I guess to remove him from English aristocracy and, and, and rid them of the embarrassment, he agreed to take up a position as superintendent of convicts in Botany Bay. On that trip, Darcy Wentworth met Carolyn, Catherine Crowley, who was a convict on the ship. They married and had a son, William, whose name appeared as William Crowley on the convict list. In time, William Crowley became known as William Charles Wentworth. So he was a native-born Australian, and yet he was born on a sailing ship from England to Australia. Interesting, I think. Now, young Wentworth spent his early years at Norfolk Island, and for some of them who know, it was a hellhole. And it must have been from that experience that he interrelated well with the plight of the convicts. His mother, unfortunately, died early when they came to New South Wales, and she was buried at Parramatta and was placed in the earth by the Rever Reverend Samuel Marsden, of whom we'll talk about in a great deal in another video. A William Charles, with a cast in his eye, was sent to England to continue his education. When he returned in 1810 to New South Wales, he found his father was still not accepted and behaving in a manner that people just didn't want anything to do with him. Now Darcy Wentworth also attacked Governor Macquarie. After the Blue Mountains crossing, Lawson went on to other things and Gregory Blackslin was looking for pasture and his fortune. Wentworth was the only member of the three who really understood the significance of the crossing of the mountains and how that would open up the colony to a great deal of expansion. In 1816, the 26-year-old went to England to study law and like all things coincidental, he wanted to marry the daughter of John MacArthur, another significant player in New South Wales. Now, during his stint in England, Wentworth saw himself as a pioneer in the new land and had a vision of his future, hoping to create an egalitarian society in New South Wales, all men are equal. His plan was to give the people in the colony advantages which they perhaps have sought or maybe, maybe would not have attained in England, but in New South Wales they'd have a free trade, a free government in which they could all practice freedom of religion. He even went on to so far as to go to the House of Commons and speak against a parliamentarian, Mr. Bennett, who had maligned his father. He fronted him. Bennett was so shocked when young William confronted him about the facts of the matter that he stopped the circulation of material impugning his father Darcy immediately. Now here Wentworth starts to show his true colours. Now he wasn't content with leaving that issue settled, leave it alone and be forgotten. No, he saw other nefarious phantom players who had maligned his father and had contributed to this calumny, and one of those was Samuel Marsden. He couldn't be objective in terms of looking at issues, but allowed his volatile emotions to run right. In the end, John MacArthur did not give him permission to marry his daughter, and this led to his start of his hatred of the MacArthurs. And again, we have Commissioner Big coming into the story. Now, if you remember our Commissioner Big, he gave a scathing story about Macquarie. Now, Commissioner Big was appointed to investigate what Macquarie was allegedly supposed to have done. So Big's report came out in 1822, and in some parts of it, Big criticised William Charles Wentworth. Now, Wentworth was a supporter of Macquarie generally, and hoped that you know, Macquarie would be remembered in the Australian hearts. Wentworth, in his, his arts interest, read poetry by Lord Byron and went to church in the Middle Temple. In 1817, he studied French in Paris and was admitted to the bar. Now his income in Paris started to droop. He put a hand out to MacArthur and Earl Fitzwilliam, but they both declined. Now, 
frankly, the pamphlet he was jotting down about New South Wales turned into a book about his vision for the colony. So he's back in New South Wales in October 1824, and after he'd landed, he along with Robert Wardell published the first edition of his newspaper, which he called The Australian. A governor of Brisbane, who we talked about in the first video, gave his permission to the freedom of the press. But in his newspaper, Wentworth would go on in the years ahead to use it as a platform to attack his enemies and support his friends. He was saddened to learn of the death of Governor Macquarie, but Wentworth was equally saddened, perhaps more so, about the death of Lord Byron. And in his home in Castle Ray Street, William Charles Wentworth lived his full life. He was a socialite. He liked drinking sessions with both men and women. He was no aesthete, but a man rooted in the pleasures of life. Now, in our second video, we'll examine Wentworth's career as he takes on his enemies in various fights for liberty and character. See you next time. I'm Michael Bischel.